Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. We have got a busy day ahead of us today. I think one thing that is often overlooked on a homestead is the importance of fencing. Uh, none of the animals will stay where they're supposed to stay if your fencing isn't good. And fencing is one of those things that's kind of like a chain. It's only as good as the weakest part and today, we've got several weak parts in our fencing. Yesterday, when we went checking fencing for our beef herd, uh, we realized that in one of the storms that's come through, uh, tr a tree fell and, and damaged part of the fence there. And then this morning, Kevin went to feed the pigs and realized that our boar pen is having some issues with its electrical fencing, and so we need to fix that today, too. So we thought that today we'd just bring you along. We've got other things to do, too. We thought we just bring you along on our day and just kind of show you day in the life here at Living Traditions Homestead. Now the first fence that we need to fix is actually all the way down at the bottom of this hill. Uh, don't worry we don't have to climb down there. We do have a road to ride down there on the UTV. Uh, it's a little bit of a bumpy ride so we won't be able to show you guys that but we'll show you once we get down there and then down actually at the very bottom of here we do have a, a small pasture for the cows. They do like to spend a lot of time down there because there's usually no wind down there and uh, it's just a really nice area. So we're gonna jump in the, in the UTV. We've got everything loaded up, chainsaw, post driver, extra T posts. Anything uh, we might need right, because we, we're going way down there. Right. We may not need it all, but when you're going on a trip down there, you make sure you bring extra stuff along. So we're gonna jump in the UTV and we'll see you guys down at the bottom of the hill. So here we are at the bottom of where we showed you guys a few minutes ago, or a minute ago, I guess. And this is the pasture that we have all the way down here at the bottom of our property. I don't know if you can see it on the video here, but at the very back side here, there is a creek that runs back there. And the fence that we need to fix today is actually just on this side of the creek. So we need to uh, go it's down on that end of the pasture and we need to put that fence back up It looks like a tree fell on it. Uh, we'll show you that when we get over there But basically uh, we need to stop the cows from trying to get over to that creek All right, we're down by the section of fence that needs to be fixed and you guys it's actually quite a bit worse than I thought it was going to be We were down here kind of late in the day yesterday and it was getting kind of dark So we didn't get a chance to look really well but basically, you can see a tree has fallen on the fence here. It looks like what happened is when we had a big rain a few weeks ago, the water came up here. You can see all of this debris and you can see all the, the weeds are pushed going in this direction. That shows me that the water from the creek over here, which you can see there's not a whole lot of water right now, that water was actually so deep that it was over here and all of this stuff started getting pushed up against the fence over here. So we need to start, the first thing we're going to do is try to cut this tree off, or not try, we're going to cut this tree off. And then we're going to see if we can repair part of this fence. You can see that a lot of this fence was held up just with these old wood posts. We've been going through, since we've owned the place, we've been going through and adding T-posts where we can, but obviously we haven't gotten it all done yet. So we're going to add some T-posts here. We're hoping we can save most of the uh, barbed wire or at least repair it. And then, so we have two sections like this that we need to do where we need to basically repair the fence. And then down on the other end here, there's actually a big piece that is so far gone that there's no way to even repair it. It's not even worth our time to try. So we're going to actually add a whole new piece of fence down there. We'll add five new strands of barbed wire and a bunch of new posts down there. And that's what we have going on in this section for today. Um, thinking it'll take us a few hours at least, so we need to get started.
You guys can see, these are the old fence posts that are still down here holding up part of this fence. I'm sure they were great posts in their day, but they are definitely past their prime. You can see there's one here. That one's actually still not too bad, but look at this one here. It's uh, pretty much not in the ground anymore. Like I said, I'm sure these were great posts in the day, but they're not doing their job anymore. So we need to replace them or at least add some T-posts in between them, which is what we've been trying to do. A big part of the problem with the fence down here is that the original owner of this property not only had cattle that he allowed down here, but he also had goats. So he had, well, it's buried here. You can see down here, he had field fencing back here, which is this type of fencing with the squares. That was to help hold in the goats, which I'm sure did a great job. But because of that, everything can get tangled in this fence so easily when, it, when the creek washes out like this. By switching everything over to just barbed wire, now that we only have cattle here, we don't have goats here anymore, um, you know, stuff can kind of wash through here easier and hopefully over time, we'll be able to eliminate all of this old field fencing and just have the barbed wire. And hopefully that will make things easier in the long term. But for today, our goal today is just to make this fence good enough that the cows will stay in. Uh, that's really the goal for today. So uh, we need to get back to work and see what we can figure out. Okay. Where that we can throw on the other side, the better. Yeah. All right, we got three strands up. You can see that it actually looks pretty good. Um, the last piece of barbed wire actually snapped when that tree fell. It's way back here. And it's an old rusty piece. So I don't feel too good about putting a lot of pressure on it to try to pull it really tight to piece it back together. So we're gonna pull it as tight as we can and then I'll use just a short piece of new barbed wire to splice the two broken ends together. And I think that'll work at least good enough for today. I'd like to say that this is a temporary fix, but you guys, an old farmer told me one time, there's nothing more permanent on a farm than a temporary fix. So if we get this done today and for the next 10 years it keeps the cows in, this is probably how the fence is gonna be back here. Uh, because really that's all it needs to do is do its job. All right, we're gonna try to fix this last strand and we can move down to the next section.
All right, on to the last section of this fence that we need to fix for today and the biggest section because this section is completely destroyed. You can see that there are some newish T-posts even through this section, but where this used to go is basically from that tree over there, it kind of went straight across to this tree, this big tree here, and then it goes up the hill that way. It connects to that stump there, and then it just kind of keeps going up the hill. But what it looks like happened is this big piece of tree laying on the ground here, we've actually seen that piece of tree a couple hundred feet up that way in the past. It must have washed down here and it completely wiped out this fence. You can see this field fencing here. If you look here, it's tangled up in this tree, but look, the force of that tree actually snapped all of this field fencing as the water ran through here. So, I mean, that was some powerful water running through here. So at some point we need to get all of this out of here. Now, again, our goal for today is just to make this fence good enough to keep the cows in. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So our plan for today is to actually go from that tree over there where there's a ready fence connected to. We're going to run five new strands of barbed wire from that tree over to this stump. We're going to kind of eliminate this corner for today. All of this old fencing will stay here for today till I can get back down here on a nicer day. You know, once the weather is consistently nice and we'll get that out of here. But for today, we're gonna run five strands from there to there. We need to get this done because we're running out of daytime. We need to get up and fix uh, Charlie's pen yet. And they're saying six o'clock is when the weather's gonna turn bad. Well, the first thing that we're gonna do so that we know where we're going and so that we have mostly a straight line is we're gonna run a piece of this pink string from one of these little trees. We're gonna start our fencing here at this big tree and run it to that stump over there. And the pink line will show us where we need to put our T-posts so that we're not all wonky and all over the place. So that's what we're doing right now. Five steps. I bet we just need one more. Okay. You guys, I understand now why these old guys didn't replace all of these poles every time there was an issue because this is solid rock down here. Even with my post driver, we could barely get these poles in. Having to put these in by hand would have been impossible. Absolutely. This is why they used trees. This is why they did whatever they could do, you know, to just make the fences work. So I have a lot of respect for those old timers who did this all by hand. All right, we need to start putting up some wire.
All right, you guys, I think for today, this fence is done. I don't think this turned out too bad. Not the prettiest fence I ever put up, but believe it or not, not the worst fence I ever put up either. So it's gonna be, I think it's gonna hold up pretty well. All right, let's move on to heading over to the pig pens. Well, a quick change of plans. We still need to go do the fencing uh, by Charlie, but our AI guy, Shane, uh, we've been expecting him, but didn't know what time he was gonna come by came up from the holler and he was here. So he's going to do some things with Rose. We're trying to get her pregnant. Uh, so let's head in by the dairy barn and get started. Well, the first thing that he's gonna do for us actually is check and see if she has a cyst. Sometimes if they have a cyst on one of their ovaries, it will make their cycle not very regular. It can prevent them from getting pregnant. So uh, he's a nice guy, knows what he's doing. So he's gonna check that first. Now, if she has one, then what? Uh, we can give her a shot, just like we did Hope last time. Okay. And is that something that we should get from the vet? Oh, that would be great. You're a good girl. Is that fairly common? Yeah. I mean, it's not like 50% of them have it, but it's not uncommon for cows to get cysts on their ovaries. Okay. So let me run and get a shot. Okay. The good news is uh, we can treat the ovary today. Uh, Shane has a shot that we can give her that will essentially uh, make that that cyst burst. Um, and then after a little bit, I don't know the timing, then we can start the AI process, but it we won't be starting that today. We're gonna have to wait a little bit. You're a good girl. Any hormone you want to put it deep in the muscle with a small needle. Okay. So I'll leave this syringe a needle. Okay. okay. And you can either put this in the refrigerator or it just says it needs to be under 77 degrees. That's fine. We have a fridge. So we've been trying to get Rose pregnant for quite a while. I think this is actually going to be the fourth time that we'll go through the AI process. Uh, so we've been having a little bit of difficulty and because of that and because I've felt like her cycles haven't been very consistent, uh, that's why we were suspecting that maybe she had a cyst. So it does put us back a little bit farther that yes, she does have a cyst, but we're going to clear that out and we'll be able to start the AI process uh, knowing that she doesn't have anything going on with her ovaries. So for today, he gave her a shot that will go ahead and burst that cyst. He'll return, um, I'm not sure the timing yet, but he'll be putting in um, a hormone implant that will get her cycle back on schedule. Uh, and then soon after that, we'll be able to do the artificial insemination. And hopefully after that, we'll have a calf on the way. We're so excited. So now after all that excitement, we still need to go back over to Charlie's pen, get that fixed up before we run out of daylight. Final project for the day is to replace the electric fence portion of this pen right here where Charlie and Linda and Donna are. I think what's been happening is Charlie's getting a little too frisky with the girls and they accidentally hit the fence. But I fixed it about five times already and I'm done fixing it the way it is right now. Basically what's happening is you can see right now what we have are connectors on our T-posts with our electric wire. And Charlie keeps snapping off the, the insulators, I think on accident. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace it today with some electric uh, rope. We're going to add these on the inside of the existing fence and then we're going to use the electro braid rope the same stuff we use for the cattle and we're going to run a string of that all the way along the inside and i think that that will solve the problem 
So first thing we need to do is I'm going to feed them so they're distracted while we're working in there. And then uh, we're going to take down their old fence and start putting up the new ones. Are you guys hungry? They're getting along a little better when it comes to eating, as long as I give them all sufficient space. Charlie is getting a little more tolerant of the girls eating up here with him. All right, let's get to work. Now, like I said, the first thing I'm gonna do is just go take off their old wire. Because we're running out of time and that rain looks like it's coming, I'm not gonna take off all the old T-post insulators today. I'm just gonna leave them up and we'll just work around them. But we do need to get the wire out of here. Less than an hour ago, we were too warm and we were working in t-shirts. Now the front is coming in. It's getting much cooler. It's already dropped at least 10 degrees. Sweatshirt weather again. So uh, we're gonna, we're gonna speed this up because it's just gonna get colder and colder as the night goes on. I'm gonna pound the post. Sarah's gonna put on the insulators. Now for the electric fence portion of this today, we're gonna to be using this electro braid one thing I like about this, whew, that wind is getting bad. That storm's coming, you guys. Uh, one thing I like about this is it's much more visible than just the electric wire. So not only is it, you know, a deterrent because it shocks them, but it's also more of a physical deterrent because they can actually see it better. So basically, we'll just start there. I don't have any of the bigger stronger uh, corner posts right now but these are fine and this stuff doesn't have to be super tight so we'll basically start the way that these little spring insulators work is they start off sideways like this the fence slides in and then we turn that and then it's locked in place we'll just go and put that all the way around the fence Yeah, Charlie, this is because of you. I've decided to tie this on here to give this some extra stability so we can pull everything a little tighter. So I'll just use an extra little piece here. Tie this on. Nothing fancy about electric fence. It works. If it's doing a good job, that's all that matters. If the pigs don't mess with it, that's all that really matters. One thing I like about this electro braid rope is that really for the most part, hand tight is all you ever need. Right, Charlie? Yeah. All right, last thing to do is I've got my little jumper. This is coming from the wire over in the girls' pen over there. I've got this buried underground coming over here to this pen. We'll just twist that wire around the rope like this. And there we go, that fence is fixed. I'm gonna go plug it in so it's hot and then we are done with fencing for the day. Well, you guys, thanks for spending the day with us. You know, this is not the day that we had planned for today, but we saw some things that needed to be taken care of today. We couldn't put them off and we got them all done. Yeah, when you're on a farm or a homestead and things like this happen, I mean, a big hole in the fence where all of your cows or your cattle could get out, that's not something you can say, hey, you know, we've got other things to do today. We're going to have to put that off because, like I said to Sarah earlier, it's a lot easier to fix this fence now than it is to try to round the cattle up when they're two miles down that creek. And we need to try to get them all the way back in that little hole. So, 
And, um, you know, the same goes for pigs. Once these pigs realize that the uh, electric isn't working or it's turned off, they could just push up those hog panels, no problem, and just be like down the road. Right, which has happened. Yeah. So yeah, when a, especially an electric fence, when you notice that there's a problem, you need to get it fixed because just as fast as they learn to respect that electric fence, they know when it's not working anymore and they disrespect it just as fast. Yeah. So you guys, thanks for spending the day with us today. Just, you know, as we're fixing stuff, this just happens and we're glad you were along. If you're enjoying our videos, we hope that you'll hit that subscribe button before you leave. Don't forget, as always, the absolute best way that you can help us is just to share our videos on all of your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.